Viewers and subscribers, welcome back to Beating the Press Podcast. I am your host, Rafa. Now, coming up in this evening's podcast, we're going to be reviewing the EPL action, which took place over the weekend. Big result in the Man City versus Arsenal game. And of course, here to review these matches with me, we have returning to the podcast, Christoph. Good to be back, viewers. Yes, indeed, Christoph. We're going to kick things off over there at the Etihad. Arsenal, Christoph. Should we say Man City held out for a draw or Arsenal gave it away? Um, I think I would say Man City scraped a draw due to a lapse in Arsenal concentration late, you know. And that's all it takes sometimes, one lapse. And, you know, that's kind of how City got both of their goals, lapses in concentration. Um, in my opinion, but um, the first one not as serious, you know that Haaland goal, but obviously the the second one off the the corner, you know City managed to bungle a, a goal and you know as such salvage the points or salvage uh, a point for themselves. Indeed, indeed, indeed. But I mean, it was definitely a good game, especially in that first half, Christoph. But Arsenal having taken the lead, is it naivety from Trossard or? Is this another case of the referees getting it wrong? Um, it's a case of, of of the referees doing foolishness, in my opinion. Um, the the reason for the second yellow, as stated by the, the FA, is that Trussard delayed the starting, the restarting of the game by by kicking away the ball. But if you go in and you go in and you challenge and then you get the ball and then you're you're kind of clearing it. You know, what are you expecting? It, it's a bit ridiculous because we saw Jeremy Doku earlier in the half do the same thing and no card was produced. So, um, like I said, there there must be some bias, some agenda, or some extra strictness that is used against Arsenal because they're saying Arsenal are time-wasting, basically. Um, last season, I don't recall anybody really getting any yellow cards for any time-wasting. And Oh, well, this year, I think there has been an emphasis on that. Oh, that, you know, that uh, that's fine. That is fine. Yeah, but last la- year, last the season... emphasis was more on, I think, uh, confrontations with the referee or people trying to influence the referee to give yellow cards by, you know, maybe signaling... For a yellow. So if you signaled, then you were the one who got the yellow rather than the opponent who you were signaling to give that yellow. So that was the emphasis last year. This year, the emphasis obviously is on time wasting tactics. But I mean, you're on yellow already, Christoph. Your team is 2 1 up. This is just inexperience from. Just- oh, no, 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 no. It, it, there was a. The, the, it was a challenge. Inexperience in what? In what? The, the, the player well, got. He, he, he got a second yellow for your on a yellow already and the, the magnitude of the game. Oh, the, you the you play, have the to player, the player did nothing wrong. As I said, Jeremy Doku well. did the same thing in the game, in that very game, got no yellow. Right? Mm. We saw Dominic Slobeslai do the same thing at Liverpool, got no yellow. So there is some disconnect between what is the correct call and that. So the referees clearly are more strict when it comes to Arsenal for some reason because we don't see this happening to other teams at the moment. Ah, indeed, indeed. There have been a few dubious decisions, to say the least. But in all honesty, Christoph, these decisions hey, we, do we, balance we are, out at the end are, of the season. No, Every team has out. these decisions they, to they, contend no, with no, season no, in, no, season no. out. No, no, no. Remember I, Liverpool I, I, last I see... season with that goal which was <laughs> wrongly disallowed versus Spurs. That's even worse than this decision. You're oh, talking yeah. out a fairly legal goal compared to, let's say, giving a second yellow, which lead to a red, of course. But which one is worse? Disregarding a, a, a onside goal or giving a player a yellow card, which lead to a red? I mean, oh, this, oh, these decisions hey, hey, happen hey, from time to these, time. No, no uh, the, these decisions happen from time to time. The problem is these decisions are affecting the result of the game. Just as like they always do, Liverpool. as no, they always no. do. These decisions should not be affecting the result. That is well, the I mean, it's 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 these big calls which often turn the tide in games at times. Hey, in all honesty, last season, last season, last season, same referee, Michael Oliver, Arsenal versus Man City, Kovacic in the the, the game that was played at the Emirates, 
tackled, I believe, Makai or Saka, studs up and did not receive a red card. After the game, the referee said he did not want to affect the game by issuing a red card. So why did he issue a red card in this in this game? Well, technically, it wasn't a red, it was a second same, yellow. <laughs> irrelevant. He but, issued a, I mean, he could have kept, said, though, that being said, let's look at the result in context, in though. Let's look at the result in context. It, you know, the result itself didn't really surprise me. It, the game ended in a draw. However, I was not expecting so many goals, in all honesty, especially in the first half. But in the in the preview, we, we did speak about a team scoring early. And then, of course, it may turn into a contest. And so said, so done. That man again, Christoph, which I've been telling you about, Alan, that was the man who broke the deadlock to start. And if not for a, a superb strike from, from the Arsenal new signing, it could have been a different game. Right. How, how did you see that first half of action? Um. So, for me, the first half... Um. Arsenal did look a bit, you know, shaky starting out that game. Um, Man City looked threatening the first 20 minutes before the goal scored. As soon as that goal was scored, is I, I, I don't know if City thought, oh, you know, we're going to win or whatever. But after that goal had scored, City did, did not, despite all their position, did not look threatening for the majority of the game to me. They created no clear-cut chances. You know, not a lot of chance creation going on. They simply dominated position and passed the ball her own. Right, Arsenal, right. we know, is the best defense in the league who are happy to sit back in these types of games and play on the counter attack. Well, well, just a correction on that. Currently, Liverpool is the top defense in the league, in all honesty. Liverpool have only conceded one goal. So, <laughs> I mean, Arsenal was definitely the best defense last season, but this season is young, but Liverpool leads the way. Uh... To me, though, Christoph, to me, I think Arteta erred in terms of the approach he took, having now gone down to 10 men and trying to defend a 2-1 lead. I thought Arsenal went too much, too defensive. They went ultra-defensive. And to me, that cost them in the end. I thought they should have played with some a greater deal of purpose. At least be a threat of somewhat on the counter. Yes, be defensive. You know, limit the, the chances that Man Man City have. You know, you're down to 10, you're playing with one less player, you're going to come under pressure. However, I thought Arsenal went too defensive, too early. They needed to remain a threat on the counter. And of course, one of the big changes that, that Arteta made was to remove Saka, one of the only players who could potentially pose a threat to Man City on that counter attack and brought in another defender uh, pretty much to shore it up and... To me, they went defensive too early. What's your What's your take on that, though? Um, I, a different I approach have been taken. I I completely agree with you that instead of going so defensive, um, and obviously you you ten man down at the Etihad, you are probably going to defend a lot more than you right. normally would. But I I do think like on the court there should have been a player, um, who was already who was ready to be sprung, you know, with a long true ball running on. I think that more of that should have happened um, definitely in the second half and it would have put City under some real threat. They would have had to hold more players back That's and right. try That's to, right. to cover that space. But uh, yeah, I, I think it was an error in judgment. I thought maybe he would have saved that for a little bit later, maybe 70-75. When I saw him start the second half, um, very defensive. I'm like, okay, maybe they're going to wait till the 65th, 70 minute bring on a Raheem Sterling and then get those windows balls and then play them over the top. Right, right, to right. Using his to, put, to put pressure on, on the, the Man City goalkeeper. But yeah, I didn't defensive. see that. I think it was probably a case of um, Sterling might not be as defensively solid as the, the other players. Um, as such, he didn't want to disrupt the defensive shape that they had. Uh, I'm not buying it. I thought it's just a scared tactic, in all honesty. That has been Arteta's approach, especially in these big games, Christoph. In my opinion, that's what I have seen from Arsenal. When Arsenal come up against big-name teams, Bayern Munich, Man City, Liverpool, they take a cautious, conservative approach to the game. And again, that's what I saw. Yes, you're down to 10. However, you do have a lead. So, yes, 
be a bit more cautious, be defensive, but you have to remain a threat on that counter attack. And I thought uh, Arteta went too defensive too early. Uh, it was all Man City second half. When I checked the stats, players like Martinelli, uh, Timber could not even complete a pass in the entire game, Christoph. Can you believe that statistic? <laughs> Uh, Timber um, had no well, completed Timber. pass. Sorry, Kai Havertz and Timber had no completed pass in the entire game. It's the first I'm hearing of that statistics in all honesty. Martinelli was the one who set up uh, Cali Fury for that uh, equalizing goal. But Kai Havertz and Timber had 0% completed pass in the game. I was shocked when I saw that statistic. And it just goes to show that, to me, Arteta went too defensive too early. And at the end of the day, it cost them that three points. I mean, Man City would have been very happy to have taken a point at that stage of the game. I mean, the last, technically the last kick of the ball. And if not, Arsenal just had to hold up. But it was not to be a, another classic game, you could say, Simply ruined by the referee. Uh, but if you, for me, if you go by the letter of the law, it's a yellow. But, you know, uh, certain biases may exist. You know, big teams, big name teams. But again, Christoph, it comes back to my original point. If you're going to be champions, you have to be the current champions. And currently, I'm not seeing that from Arsenal. Can Arsenal be champions? I mean, coming into this game, Christoph, you were very cautious. <laughs> you, you weren't too confident in all honesty. Uh, what's your take after this 2-2 two -two draw now? Um, well, I have to say I, I disagree with, with what you're saying. Um, I, it is definitely a cautious approach that Arsenal takes in these bigger games, but um, this cautious or more cautious approach has been working. Your points have been collected from majority of these games. Arsenal beat City in the first leg last season. Arsenal has beat Tottenham. Um being cautious, Arsenal has beaten Liverpool being cautious. So, but um, re regardless, at the end of the day, hey, 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 at the end of the day, what matters <laughs> is the result and true, true, and trophies and trophies, most importantly, trophies, silverware. And that's what I was gonna say. Yes, you're getting these results, possibly one off, but the trophies are missing currently. And to me, if it's not this season, I'm not sure when Arsenal will win a trophy if they don't win over the last. Two years, this is going to be the third year that you're looking for some form of silverware, a cup, a title, something. The, the hard work, Christoph, have to be capped with something in the trophy cabinet. What says you? I agree that Arsenal need to, to win um, some silverware at the end of the season, but a lot of people seem to forget that Arteta did win the FA Cup in his first um half season i mean and you know <laughs> you know a lot of people like to to don't play stuff like the community shield but arsenal did beat uh man city uh, twice uh, do you really classify the community shield as a trophy oh, hey, 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 hey. Hear, hear me hear me hear me hear me people people <laughs> pe people people don't call it a trophy if arsenal right. win but anybody else wins it it's a trophy Mm, interesting, interesting stuff there. I guess people boost their resume by, you know, uh, saying, hey, we want a community shield. That's one piece of silverware. Uh, I don't buy it. I think it's just a glorified uh, it, friendly. To me, in all to, me, I, to me, it's a friendly, but that, that's the same thing with the UEFA Super Cup. But, you know, you still see people celebrating them as if it were some big trophy. Well, so, that is you know, true. That is true. But to I me, Arsenal know. definitely need to win. They need to show some trophies this year for the hard work over the last three years. Yes, like I must I... give credit to Arteta for building a team that is challenging at the top of the league. I must give credit for that. But at the end of the day, what you will be judged by is the trophies you have won. Same thing when Jurgen Klopp left Liverpool. When you check the statistics, he had some of the best seasons in EPL history. But at the end of the day, he left with one league title and one Champions League. That's what his legacy will be built, built on. That's what he will be remembered for. Yes, some really amazing points tally. 
really amazing. Some of the highest points tally when you check the statistics. If not for City, those sort of points tally would have won the league in any other year when you look back in history in terms of the points tally that have lifted league titles. I believe when I check the stats, he would have that point tally would have surpassed any point tally that a man like Sir Alex would have accumulated in any one season. But at the end of the day, what will he be remembered for? One league title, one Champions League. And it's the same thing with Arteta. Great challenge, finishing second, one point behind, two point behind. But at the end of the day, if you have nothing in that trophy cabinet, that is what you will be remembered by. And this has to be the year of Arsenal, in all honesty. This has to be the year. And of course, coming from that game, Christoph, we saw the demise of Rodri. He seemed to be out for the entirety of the season now. So that is one less big-name player that Pep has to call upon. What sort of impact could this have on Man City's season going forward? Or will Pep have to dip into the transfer market come January? Um, well, we can't be sure what type of long-term um, issues or you know, positive or negative that Man City will have as a result. They did start the season well without Rodri. Um, so I don't think the impact is as bad this season as it would have been last season had they lost him for a big chunk because we saw Rodri miss, I think, four games in a row for Man City and they lost three of the four. So um, it's hard to say, but I don't think it will be as impactful as last season. We saw the return of Gundogan and Kovacic seem to be doing a relatively good job in that midfield, making up for Rodri being missing earlier in the season. He's out again. I think they'll step in and do a job again. Uh, indeed, definitely. I must say, you know, Kovacic has taken on the mantle in the absence of Rodri. And he's out now for the entirety of the season. ACL injury, I'm hearing. So that's pretty much his season done I think and I've, dusted. I've heard it's a cruciate ligament injury, I think. Right. Okay. So, but yeah, I've, I've heard it, you know, potentially... Uh, the entire season, but yeah, um, definitely, I guess the, definitely. Depending, that, that's a I mean, surgery type situation. Depending on how good you know the surgeon is and the recovery process, you could see him returning late in the season. And it could also be a career ending injury as well. You look at the likes of a Ronaldo, the original Ronaldo from Brazil. That what put an end to his career. It was those chronic knee injuries, and his career was pretty much cut short when you look at the statistical books. Ronaldo did not win a Champions League title. <laughs> as great as he was, <laughs> he does not have a Champions League uh, title under his name. So <laughs> it just goes to show, you know, how injuries can really affect one's career. Of course, he has uh, uh, quite a number of World Cup titles, but never to lift that Champions League. But some other interesting results, Christoph, over the course of the weekend as well. Chelsea blowing away West Ham United three goals to nil. That was a shock result for me, in all honesty. I thought that game would have been closer. But West Ham really looked toothless. And Chelsea seemed to have found their best 11 and are kicking on. Talk to us. Did you see that game and how did you find that encounter? Um, well, you know, obviously, as you said, the result is actually quite shocking, to be honest, because Chelsea has been better than last season, but um, they still seem to be up and down to me. So I, I, w I really wasn't expecting them to score three goals, but it wasn't as if to me that they dominated West Ham or anything like that. They simply made their chances pay on the counter attack. West Ham did not make their chances pay, and as such, you know, Chelsea walked away with that result. I didn't think they were spectacular or they outplayed West Ham or anything like that. You know, they 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 scored their goals on the counter attack. Uh, definitely, but I I my view somewhat differ from yours in what I saw and what I assessed. It was a totally dominant performance by Chelsea. Chelsea did not have to shift out of gear, in all honesty, and that was because of the approach that West Ham took. It, it was a toothless approach by West Ham, especially at home in a London derby. And I'm not, I'm not sure if this coach, Lopetegui, will survive the season if results don't shift quickly because lots of money has been spent and he seemed not to be able to get 
his ducks in a row. He seemed to be struggling to find the right balance in that team or even to put his best 11 forward. So that is the struggle right now. What is your best 11? Does it have the right balance? And can you get some positive result with this team going forward? So it's an uphill climb for West Ham. It's a poor start to their season. And Chelsea seem to be rounding into farm. The squad have been trimmed tremendously. And the coach seemed to know which players he is working with and which players he has his confidence in. And that seemed to be working for this Chelsea team going forward. Of course, a number of players are out injured, which could come back and even boost this team even further. But definitely an early team to look out for. I am not sure if their form will continue or if the yo-yo will continue. But so far, so good. A bit of consistency is now coming into the team. And they are a dangerous team to look at. Of course, last season, they had Man City's ticket as well. Man City could not get a win over them, even when the odds were against them. And it just goes to show that this team may have something to offer this season. You know, many counted them out because of the huge amount of spending and the number of players that was in that squad. Totally I mean, bloated, I, but I, it's been trimmed I down. Don't... I don't quite agree with you that um, Chelsea had Man City's ticket. I think it was Pochettino who had the ticket and he was kind of let down by the players last season mm. in terms of the, the some of the finishing in those games. We know we had that, you know, that 4-4 um, thriller earlier in the season, but um, when you look back at the results of those games and you, you go back and you look at it, you saw that Chelsea, in my opinion, had the better chances in those games to win. But uh, like we said, players like uh, uh, Raheem Sterling, you know, missing one-on-ones with Ederson kind of let them down. Because I, based on the chances created in those games, I thought Chelsea should have beaten Man City in both legs. I mean, going into those games, we had said we we can't see Chelsea beating Man City. Right, At least right. in the first leg, we said we can't see Chelsea beating Man City only for them to draw for all, I thought, again, you know, Chelsea had the better chances but was let down by poor finishing by a, a Nicholas Jackson and a, a Sterling and so on. And even in the second leg, I thought, again, Chelsea had the better chances but poor finishing from, again, Jackson and, and Sterling. But, ah, well, I mean, this season, Christoph Jackson seemed to be finding his finishing boots. You know, he is one of the league's top goal scorer currently. Of course, that man Haaland is way out front. But definitely, Jackson is one of those names that you have to start showing some respect to. You know, he got another brace versus West Ham. And of course, that man Cole Palmer, once Cole Palmer is in that team, then Chelsea is always a threat. But definitely a big result, a moral boosting result, a confidence boosting result for this Chelsea team. And you would be a very brave man to bet against them in their next uh, upcoming fixtures. But of course, a number of other results, Christoph. Liverpool getting this week a routine win over Bournemouth, it must be said. And another clean sheet for Slat, Christoph. Uh, three nil winners. Liverpool, uh, Diaz getting a double. And of course, that Man Salah was always involved uh, setting up one of those goals. But Darwin Nunes getting the start over Jata and really paying off. He scored a cracking goal in that one. And it was all uh, Liverpool, you know, as they would say, from gun to tape. Uh, Bournemouth did create a few chances a few scares they did get the ball in the back of the net but that one was chalked off or offside but in general a comfortable performance I would say for Liverpool of course Bournemouth I am still impressed by that team in all honesty Christoph it was 3-0 but with better finishing they could if they took their chances then it could have been a different ball game in all honesty what, what's your take on this Bournemouth team? Um, definitely could have been a different ball game had they had maybe a Ivan Antonio up top, you know, a striker who you admire greatly, who Liverpool potentially should have signed, but you know, ah, not at all, not at all. I'd rather take Darwin Nunes any day and twice on a Sunday, in all honesty, yeah. you know, Tony's pass, he, his best day, he's more of a target man striker, he would have been a better fit, in all honesty, at Arsenal, you know, no, uh, doubtful, just doubtful. to add something different, possibly coming off the bench. 
you, you need a, a bit of variation, a bit of variety. And of course, he knows how to put the ball in the back of the net. But he's earning his millions over there in Saudi quite comfortably. And I can't, can't wrong him. You know, he's getting the payday that he has been waiting for. And we're talking about generational wealth, in all honesty. So uh, kudos to Tony there for locking up a contract over there in the Desert League. But definitely Bournemouth will and come again back to the drawing board, but they have something to offer. I think they should be fairly safe in terms of any sort of relegation, and I think they will cause problems for teams going forward. That man Semenyo, uh, one to look out for, he may get a bumper contract. Some teams may come knocking for his signature in the summer if he continues with this rich Vema farm, but he's definitely one to look out for. He caught my eye, and the, the team itself did put up some resistance. And, you know, as I said, if chances were taken, it could have been a different ball game. But kudos to Slot. Uh, continue to roll on. You know, uh, has only conceded one goal. So defensively, they're looking more of a solid unit when compared to last year. And up top, they're still scoring the goals. And options are now available. Options are there. You have the likes of Ajata, Gagpo. So there's a bit of rotation up front. You know, it keeps teams on their toes as to who to expect week in, week out. And these players are rounding into form. You know, uh, Gagpo had a brilliant game in the Champions League. Should probably be back in action this uh, uh, midweek. And of course, Darwin Nunes coming in, getting a goal. Jata started the season well have been a little quiet of late but again a big threat from off the bench and Slack is really keeping all his troops hungry so uh, congratulations there but routine win nothing to brag about just another three points in the bag and of course you know the team moved to the next challenge but again Spurs Christoph Spurs getting a win over Brentford talk to us about that game and again Brentford First minute, Christoph. <laughs> Brentford scored in, in about 20 seconds, 23 seconds versus Man City. And again, in this game, they scored in about 24 seconds versus this first team. And Boomer getting a cracking goal early in that game. But Spurs rallied and got what you could classify as a comfortable victory. You know, uh, what's your take on that one? What, what were um, your thoughts? Um, it, it... Yeah, it kind of went as I said. I thought Brentford would put up a good fight, but I think I said Tottenham just had the quality to kind of get the result over on them. I don't remember if I had predicted the score on that one, um, but it, it, it's kind of ex kind of expected. We saw Solanke opening his his Tottenham account, you know, rebounded chance, but that that early goal I thought was was very impressively taken by Mbuma. Uh, maybe it's a tactic that they've been working on over the the summer of the preseasons, and potentially it is something to look at for the remainder of the season to see if they get those early goals and then try to go on and and dominate or you know maybe defend out those results. It's hard to say at this point. Uh, definitely, you know, I that direct approach has been working and it has worked in the last two games. So. I see why not continue with that. But to me, though, Christoph, the shock, one of the shock results of this weekend has to be Crystal Palace holding Manchester United to a nil-nil draw. I expected this to be a routine win for Manu. They dominated that game, but could not find that killer goal. How come? <laughs> What's going on over there at Manchester United? I mean, it's I, 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 I'm pretty sure I said I expected Crystal Palace to win. So, no, I wasn't expecting Man United to to come away with a result. I thought Crystal Palace would have won 2-1, to be honest. Um, but they got, they, got, they got a draw. Um, based on the performances, it's probably a fair result, to be honest. Uh, but fair result? United... Man, you totally dominated the ball game. No, fair result for Palace. Well, Look at that draw. <laughs> I, I would say it's a lucky draw because they I, should be nowhere in that game. I'm not going to say it's a lucky draw because this is the type of thing we kind of come to expect from Manchester United over the last three, four years where they will, they are expected to win this game, expected to dominate. And they did dominate, but they just can't score. They either can't score the chances presented to them or they are conceding too many you know, easy goals, to be honest. 
So, no, I, I wasn't expecting anything, regardless of if Man United dominates a, a game or not. I don't go into that game expecting them to win. Wow. I thought it was a good performance. What was lacking from that performance, though, was that goal, that finish. Number of chances being created. The, the goalkeeper for Crystal Palace, Henderson, pulling out a number of saves. And, of course, Onana at the other end had to stop the likes of Eze, who got a brilliant chance on goal as well. Onana pulling out a magnificent save to keep that game level. But just based on the sheer amount of shots and chances that Manchester United created, this should have been a breeze. This has to be looked at as two point last in all honesty. And, you know, uh, Crystal Palace still haven't gotten their first win, but they have been squeezing out a few draws and keeping that points table ticking over. But definitely a shock result. I thought Man United had this one to win and I thought they let this one slip. So to me, that was a big shocker. You know, that was a big shocker for me. But I tell a few what, other the, games... The most, the most shocking thing for me in that game is that Ten Hag actually dropped Rashford. That is the most shocking well, thing for yeah, me. Yeah, that's definitely something to highlight. Uh, Rashford coming off the bench in that one was a surprise in all honesty. Uh, I'm not sure. But we did see the return of Hyland as well, Christoph, having picked up an injury. Uh, early on in the season, I believe in preseason, we did see the return of Highland. So, some more firepower is added to that Manchester United ranks. Zerke is there now, Highland is back, and of course, Rashford have gotten a few goals up late. Garnacha is there, Ahmad. So, ah, a number of players. Uh, Ten Hag is almost now working with a full squad to really select from. And it should be interesting times ahead as it relates to this Manchester United team. And if some positive results can definitely come their way. I'll so what you're saying that. is Ten Hag has no excuse? Ten Hag has no excuse. Ten Hag has no excuse. As I have been saying for the longest while, he has bought his players, Christoph. When you look at the profile of the players he has brought in, these are players who he has either worked with before are is intimately familiar with them. So I don't think no one is throwing players at Ten Hag. These are hand-picked players. So he has no excuse. Uh, no, Not many injuries. And if there are injuries, there are adequate players who can come in and do the job. So no excuse in all honesty. However, I do wish them all the best. I do hope Ten Hag keeps turning over a few results and keep him in the job because to me... If he is there, I have no fear of Manchester United. I just don't think he is the man to lead Manchester United back to their glory days, in all honesty. So if he's there, I am quite confident that teams like Liverpool, Arsenal, Man City will continue to outperform Manchester United. But we move, we move. And some other results, Aston Villa pulling out another win, Christoph. Again, coming from behind in that one. And that man again, Duran, Christoph. We have to start talking about that man, Duran. Another goal off the bench. Why I is he I, so effective coming off the bench? I, I, I think what I want to talk about is that that outrageous Rahul Jimenez goal. <laughs> well, Candidate uh, for a goal of the season. Really? Versus so. Newcastle? No, oh, no. Not Newcastle. Didn't yeah, yeah, Fulham, 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 Fulham versus Newcastle. It, it, you mean Cunha? Cunha is the one who scored versus uh, Aston Villa for Wolves. But uh, Jimenez scored a decent strike versus uh, Newcastle. I wouldn't classify it as goal of the season candidate. Oh, man, I oh, think man, Duran oh, uh, last weekend, that hit from way outside about 25 yards, that to me is possibly candidate for goal of the season. Thus far, our early oh, front runner. That's definitely what I say. But we, we, I think we saw two goal of the season candidates last week, if I recall. Right. Barnes, just... Barnes was a good goal strike again uh, right. for Newcastle as well. But my money would be on Durant for sure. And again, he came off the bench and got amongst the goals. And Aston Villa can't keep a clean sheet. But they are getting the results and they are right up there. Uh, battling it out at the top of the table. So, you know, credit must be given to Emery. Did it in the Champions League and come the weekend, they're getting the job done. Watkins seemed to be on farm and really banging in some goals. But it was another exciting week of EPL football, I must say. Christoph, any final thoughts before we wrap things up, though, as it relates to uh, the action? 
Um, well, I thought it was a, a, a weekend of goals, to be honest. You know, very good goals being scored um, all weekend, I think. Uh, but for me, you know, it has to be the poor refereeing that we are continuing to see. And definitely that the harsh refereeing against Arsenal players is definitely something to look at. For the remainder of the season, because um, I'm kind of expecting it to continue. Like I said, I think these referees either have a grudge against Arsenal or the, the FA has told them to be strict against Arsenal players. So I don't know. Other players are getting away with the same infringements that Arsenal players are get, getting booked for. So, you know, they can't tell me it's consistency or letter of the law or any of that foolishness when other players. Other teams are getting away with the same thing. Ah, indeed, indeed. And we have uh, to keep an eye on the possible overcompensation for these results. This is a high-profile game. And, you know, the referees may want to give something back. So we need to keep an eye on that also. But again, thanks again, Krista, for really coming on board and sharing your thoughts and your opinions. Viewers and subscribers, we are now up to 400 subscribers. Our aim is to get to 500 by the end of the year and we can only do that but with your help if you haven't subscribed as yet hit that subscription bell if you have subscribed already then share 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 help us to get to that 500 mark but until next time this is rafa signing off